The purpose of this video is to provide a brief overview of the normal microscopic anatomy of the human musculoskeletal system. The histologic features of the tissues that make up bones and joints will be reviewed along with their supportive connective tissue elements such as tendons, ligaments, and skeletal muscle. The viewer will be able to recognize the microscopic features of lamellar and woven bone, hyaline cartilage and fibrocartilage, synovium, tendon and ligament, and skeletal muscle. This first slide is from a section of a typical long bone. A single trabecula of mature lamellar bone occupies the center of the medullary space in this field and separates zones of fatty or yellow marrow at the top and hematopoietic or red marrow in the lower portion of the field. The trabecular bone, also called cancellous bone, stains brightly pink on the hematoxylin and eosin stain because of the presence of its main structural protein, collagen type 1. Collagen has an affinity for the acidic stain eosin in the hematoxylin and eosin stain, or H and E stain. Most proteins stain pink with H and E because proteins tend to be slightly basic in nature. Similarly, the nuclei of individual cells stain dark blue, purple, or black because of the affinity of DNA in the cell nuclei for the basic stain hematoxylin in the H and E stain. This variation in staining character allows the microscopist to differentiate the various cells and tissue elements on the basis of their H and E appearance and structural organization. Note that the fat cells appear clear except for their nuclei because the lipid in the cytoplasm of the lipocytes is removed during histologic processing of the tissue. Note the difference in cellularity between the red marrow in the lower field with its abundant hematopoietic cells and the less cellular fatty marrow in the upper half of the slide. In addition to the marrow elements, there are small flat spindled cells on the trabecular surface. These are resting osteoblasts. Similar cells deep within mature lamellar bone are present within lacunae. These are osteocytes derived from osteoblasts. The next slide is a composite of an H&E slide of mature cortical bone with its appearance under polarized light in the lower right hand corner. Under polarized light, the pink parallel lamellae of type 1 collagen fibers in mature lamellar bone appear as bright or birefringent parallel lines. This structural arrangement accounts for the strength of mature lamellar bone. It can be likened to plywood. Lamellar bone has greater rigidity and tensile strength than woven bone but less elasticity than woven bone. Note the osteocytes are bone cells present in small spaces or lacunae and oriented in the same direction as the collagen fibers. Cortical bone is thickest in areas with the largest torsional and weight bearing forces such as the proximal femur. Slide 3 is a cross-section of cortical bone with the usual appearance of osteons with their central blood vessels. Osteons are also referred to as haversion systems and are formed by osteoclastic resorption of the circumferential lamellae of the cortex. Cortical bone is initially composed of woven bone but then is remodeled over time until it is completely made of mature lamellar bone. The individual osteons are relatively self-contained metabolic units in bone and the cement lines define the physical properties of the osteons. The architectural patterns of the three types of lamellae associated with cortical bone are not clearly defined on the H&E stain under usual light microscopy and require the use of polarized light examination. The next slide is the same section of the previous uh, cortical bone but under polarized light. 
The architectural patterns of the different lamellae are now easily defined. Concentric lamellae surround the individual osteons, while interstitial lamellae reside within the spaces between concentric lamellae and their osteons. Circumferential lamellae comprise the cortical bone beneath the periosteum at the very top of the section. The next slide is a section of woven bone with its appearance under polarized light on the right and its H&E appearance on the left. Woven bone is formed during periods of rapid bone growth in the developing and growing skeleton and is the main type of bone found in reactive conditions such as fracture callus, infection, and neoplastic conditions where you see Codman triangle and matrix of bone forming tumors. It appears more hypercellular than mature lamellar bone. The osteocytes and their lacunae are large and distributed in a haphazard fashion. Under polarized light, woven bone displays an irregular felt work of collagen fibers which appear at right angles to each other in some areas. This architectural arrangement explains why woven bone is weaker, less rigid, but is more flexible than mature lamellar bone. The next slide uh, shows a bone remodeling unit with the metabolically active osteoclast at the advancing edge of this cutting cone. The cutting cone or canal that the osteoclasts generate is filled with blood vessels, small nerves, and mesenchymal cells, including stem cells enmeshed in loose connective tissue. The osteoclasts are derived from hematopoietic stem cells and are concentrated at the leading edge of the cavity. After the work of the osteoclast is completed, osteoblasts, which are derived from mesenchymal stem cells in the bone marrow, fill in the space with newly formed osteoid that becomes mineralized and becomes new bone. It takes more than 100 of these osteoblasts to fill in the space created by a single osteoclast. Slide 7 highlights this bone forming process. This section shows a row of osteoblasts forming osteoid on the surface of this trabecula. After laying down new bone matrix, predominantly collagen type 1 or osteoid, some osteoblasts become osteocytes. The smaller spindled cells with surrounding lacunae within the bone tissue or they become inactive surface osteocytes and remain on the bone surface. The next slide is another H&E section depicting numerous plump osteoblasts forming a trabecula of woven bone. This is a picture of reactive new bone as may be seen in a variety of conditions such as fracture callus, Codman triangle, and other conditions both reactive and neoplastic. In addition to bone tissue, this next slide depicts another essential tissue of the skeleton, that is cartilage. Slide 9 shows a section of the physis growth plate on the left and the articular cartilage in the adult on the right. Hyaline cartilage is a nerveless, a bloodless, firm yet pliable tissue designed to resist compressive forces. It is composed of chondrocytes or cartilage cells within lacunae that are associated with abundant extracellular matrix composed of proteoglycans, various collagens, and water. The cartilage matrix stains variably pale blue, purple, or pink depending on the relative proportion of water, collagens, and acid mucopolysaccharide ground substance or proteoglycan present. It is the acid nature of the glycoprotein of the cartilage matrix or the proteoglycan that attracts the basic hematoxylin stain hence giving the pale blue staining reaction that one often sees with chondroid or cartilage matrix. The slide on the left shows the hyaline cartilage of the growth plate or physis with its orderly arrays of chondrocytes 
that are organized into different zones. At the top is the resting reserve zone followed by the proliferative zone, the hypertrophic zone, and the calcification zone. Primary osseous trabeculae form on the mineralized cartilage core remnants of the calcification zone and extend from the base of the physis or growth plate into the metaphysis of a typical long bone. Articular cartilage in the adult on the right mimics the growth plate. The subchondral plate of bone at the base of the articular cartilage is separated from the non-mineralized hyaline cartilage of the joint by the tide mark, a serpentine dense line that represents the mineralization front. The next slide uh, provides more detail of the articular cartilage with a higher power view of the tide mark with the hyaline cartilage of the articular surface above and the subchondral bone below. When chondrocytes start to proliferate, they establish clones that have more than one cell. This is a common reactive change seen in early stages of osteoarthritis. The intense purple staining around the clones of chondrocytes is due to the increased amount of proteoglycans. The next slide is an example of fibrocartilage, normally seen in menisci and vertebral discs, for example. Fibrocartilage has a higher proportion of collagen than hyaline cartilage and is designed to resist tension. On the left is, an, is the appearance of essentially normal fibrocartilage with the small chondrocytes visible, some showing small lacunae. The slide on the right is an example of frayed and fissured damaged fibrocartilage that may be seen in a degenerated intervertebral disc or herniated disc. Similar changes are seen in the fibrocartilage of torn menisci. The next slide is, is an example of another important tissue of the musculoskeletal system. Synovium is part of the lining of diothrodial joints, tendon sheets, and bursi. Synovium is normally a single layer of cells. There are type A cells that are histiocytic-like and type B cells that are spindle cells that secrete the hyaluronic acid found in the lubricating synovial fluid of the joint space. Varying amounts of mesenchymal tissues are found in the subsynovial zone. There can be a mixture of mature adipose tissue and fibrous connective tissue as we see here along with small blood vessels and peripheral nerves. Skeletal muscle, tendon, and ligament are the other important tissues associated with the musculoskeletal system and are essential for its dynamic activity, movement, and locomotion. Skeletal muscle is seen on the left side of this slide. The skeletal muscle cells are arranged in bundles or fascicles separated by small amounts of pale staining loose connective tissue. The skeletal muscle cells contain abundant myoglobin, which is the structural protein of mus muscle and hence stain bright pink. The individual muscle cell nuclei are present as small dark dots at the edge of the fascicles. Cardiac muscle has the same fascicular pattern, but the nuclei of cardiac muscle cells reside in the center of the fascicles. The cross-section of tendon on the right contrasts with that of the skeletal muscle. The tendon is composed chiefly of bundles of collagen type 1 associated with spindle cells or fibroblasts. Ligament has a similar cross-sectional appearance. The next slide shows a longitudinal section of typical skeletal muscle with the zebra pattern of cross striations. Actin and myosin filaments present in the skeletal muscle cells repeat in this regular striated pattern and form the basic machinery for contraction. The next slide displays a closer view of a tendon in longitudinal sections with bundles of dense compact collagen and spindle cells or fibroblasts. The birefringent quality of collagen is highlighted under polarized light as seen on the right. 
The organized nature of the dense collagen bundles gives tendon the strength to deal with the forces of tension. Ligaments, tendon, and fascia are composed of similar dense collagen or dense connective tissue. Slide 16 shows a section with dense collagen fibers inserting into cortical bone. This represents a section of the plica from a knee at its insertion site into cortical bone. Note the mineralized tide marks at the point of anchoring of the plica into cortical bone. This is typical of ligament insertion sites. At the interface between the fibrous connective tissue and bone, there's a gradual transition from collagen fibers to fibrocartilaginous tissue and bone. The next slide provides a high power view of a ligament insertion site with fibrocartilaginous tissue at the bottom of the slide merging into the cortical bone at the upper portion of the field. This interface region is the weakest part of a ligament insertion site or anthesis and makes it most likely affected by trauma and avulsion injury secondary to mechanical forces. The final slide in this review is a section from the intraarticular fat pad. Note the lobules of mature adipose tissue associated with groups of blood vessels, collections of small peripheral nerves, and dense bundles of subsynovial connective tissue on the right. This concludes a brief overview of the histologic features of the most important tissues that make up the musculoskeletal system. Alterations and abnormalities of these tissues account for the changes observed clinically and radiographically in disorders of the musculoskeletal system. This brief introduction of the normal MSK tissue microscopic anatomy will hopefully give you a basis to begin to correlate pathologic changes of the various MSK disorders with their important clinical and radiologic manifestations. Thank you.